Hello, student doctors. Let's talk about niacin or vitamin B3. Here's a picture of the structure of niacin as well as a label. Your body absolutely needs this vitamin to function properly. As a supplement, it can help lower cholesterol, ease arthritis, and boost brain function, and also decrease the risk of a heart attack. Niacin can cause serious side effects. There are two brand names, Niacor and Niaspan. Niacor, Niaspan is an extended release. Generic niacin comes in both forms. The exact mechanism of action of its lipid lowering action is not completely understood, but it may inhibit the release of free fatty acids from adipose tissue, may also increase lipoprotein lipase activity, and decrease the rate of hepatic synthesis of VLDL and LDL. As with all B vitamins, niacin helps convert food into energy. Furthermore, it plays a role in cell signaling, making and repairing DNA, and acts as an antioxidant. Food and Drug Administration has approved Niacor as an adjunctive therapy for the treatment of folks with very high serum triglyceride levels. Very high means greater than 1,000 milligrams per deciliter. So in patients with a history of myocardial infarction and hyperlipidemia, this vitamin is indicated to reduce the risk of recurrent, non-fatal myocardial infarction. In a patients with a history of coronary artery disease and hyperlipidemia, niacin can be combined with bile acid sequestrants. This slows the progression or prom even promotes regression of atherosclerotic disease. Again, niacin can be used in, as an adjunctive therapy for the treatment of adults with very high serum triglyceride levels. Niacin is contraindicated in folks with known hypersensitivity, folks with active liver disease. You'll know that when they have unexplained and persistent elevations in hepatic transaminases. Folks with active peptic ulcer disease, niacin is contraindicated, as well as arterial bleeding. The most common side effect with niacin is flushing. Extended release niacin has been shown to elicit fewer episodes of flushing. Also, taking niacin at bedtime can minimize flushing. Combining it with a low fat snack like Triscuits, my favorite. Avoid alcohol, hot beverages, and spicy foods, and gradually increase niacin doses over a period of weeks to months. There's a high level of GI side effects with niacin. There's a good number of GI side effects with niacin, and here I provide you with an active link. Very large number of patients, well-controlled study. This is well beyond what you need to know for the exam. Another potential adverse effect of niacin is blood sugar elevation, also described in this Thrive study. If you click on this link, will take you back previous link. They're the same. So from this study, they conclude that patients on niacin had a higher incidence of new onset diabetes. Folks in the study who already had diabetes had a higher incidence of uncontrolled blood sugar events. I'm providing you the outline of another well-designed, well-executed study available in PubMed. If you click on this link right here, you will find primary piece of literature from the Journal of the American Medical Association entitled Effect of Niacin on Lipid and Lipoprotein Levels and Glycemic Control in Patients with Diabetes and Peripheral Arterial Disease. It's called the ADMIT study. Here I summarize the results. Again, this is beyond the scope of what you need to know for the exam. This is more for your own personal edification and knowledge. The study also looked at uric acid levels, and it turns out niacin can raise uric acid levels. Patients who receive niacin saw an average increase in uric acid levels. The conclusion is patients with gout may want to avoid niacin if possible. There's also liver enzyme elevations that are observed. Elevations are defined as greater than three times the upper limit of normal. When combined with statin therapy, the risk of elevated liver enzymes is higher. Hence, the manufacturers of niacin products recommend periodic monitoring of liver enzymes. In this HSP2 Thrive study, they did see some muscle toxicity, but the risk appears to be higher when niacin is taken with a statin. However, the overall risk is very low. East Asian and Chinese patients had a much higher incidence of myopathy when compared to European patients. Niacin can also affect platelet count and prothrombin time. It can also decrease phosphorus levels. Niacin has not been studied extensively in folks with kidney disease. You should use caution. Niacin is contraindicated in patients with active liver disease. Niacin should be used with caution in diabetics and in patients who are at increased risk for diabetes. Niacin can raise uric acid levels and should be used in caution in patients with uncontrolled gout likely should be avoided. Folks with bleeding disorders, niacin can further prolong the PT time. Niacin is contraindicated in patients with active peptic ulcer disease. There are no black box warnings associated with niacin. Niacin is a CYP2D6 inhibitor. It's absorbed rapidly. Its distribution is wide in the body. It does appear in breast milk. Niacin is metabolized in the liver to its active metabolites. 
There are certain drug interactions to be aware of. Niacin interacts with bile acid sequestrants, statins, vitamins with niacin can potentiate the side effects of prescribed niacin products. Okay, student doctors, that wraps up drugs to treat hyperlipidemia.